What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper Channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks MLB edition. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become apprised whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. A really good start to the day here in the MLB streets. Got a Nate Lowe. Low Nate Low home run. There we go. Nathaniel Low of the Texas Rangers. A lot of lefties been on the card recently. Devers yesterday, Devers again today. So lots of opportunities for some lefties to maybe uh, make us some coin there in the home run department. Doesn't project that. I'm just doing the data thing, you know, just scrounging through the books, uploading to server, figuring it all out every single day for you. But Hey, it's a really fun job. So I don't, I do not besmirch myself for such things. But FanDuel Sportsbook, that is an automatic guarantee. $5. Bet $5. Get 150 right now in bonus bets. No strings attached. You simply sign up in the video description box below. If you do not have FanDuel Sportsbook yet, and I know a lot of you do, there'll be other offers down there for you. So check them out. But FanDuel Sportsbook, you bet $5, get 150 in bonus bets right now. It's only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. But that is really good stuff from FanDuel. Check that out. All right. Another 15 games. I'm not going to dilly-dally a whole lot here at the top. We've got four games in the NBA. Check out NBA Lindy's for Wednesday slate. Lots of games. So little time. Let's get to the picks. We get our day going in Cincinnati, where there are more runs being scored by Texas. They have a lot already. 6-1 in that one. Uh, just wild stuff. Just riding that train. Come on on the train and ride it up. It's never good when that's the first song that comes into your head, but... Hey, that's a banger. The Choo Choo Train. Graham Ashcraft uh, going on the mound for Cincinnati, hosting John Gray and these Texas Rangers. And you're going to sense a, a little bit of a theme here in the first couple of games. We're going to have a lot of likes, and then we're going to have no likes for a long time. Then we're going to have some locks at the end of the night. Pretty wild how this card ended up suiting out for me, shaping up for me. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'm quite tired. But either way, Graham Ashcraft so far this season – been really good. Pretty darn solid. 1.88 ERA, uh, 1.17 whip. Baseball's Avant's down, so a lot of my server stuff isn't uploading directly to my spreadsheet, so I'm kind of lost to a certain extent, but I'll be okay. I can keep the ship upright because John Gray is really good at getting the Ks. Now, five walks against Oakland, a little bit concerning for me. Three earned runs as well there, but the philosophy looks really, really good He's been just kind of lackluster by his standards so far, but I still think he's going to start picking it up here. And that's why I kind of want to be early to the party against a team like Cincinnati, where at home here in their ballpark, sure, really, really good ballpark for hitting, but they still only have a 78 WRC plus against right-handed pitching on this season. It's pretty gross. Oh, and Graham Ashcraft has to deal with Texas. You know what they are against righties? A 123 WRC plus are the Texas Rangers. My God. Graham Ashcraft. This is a prove it spot, my friend, but I'm getting plus 135 to find out, and I am damn well going to do that. Give me the Texas Rangers offense going up against a righty here. This is close to the lock territory, but it's a really nice play to get our day started off nice and early. Make sure you get that ticket in ahead of time, but as long as it's in this plus 135 ballpark, minus one and a half, I expect runs from Texas. Even against Ashcraft, I think uh, the charm start comes to a little bit of an end here. Off to Boston and Baltimore coming up next. And another pitcher that I think has been running a little bit too good, Tanner Houck here for the Boston Red Sox. But I hope he keeps it going at least for one day. Going up against Tyler Wells. And these are two right-handed pitchers that I always think of as lefties until you watch them pitch. And then there you are. But either way, I think Boston, minus one and a half, pretty clear cut. Going to be where I'm going in this one. I really... Really want to be backing this offense going up against righties with Rafael Devers, Yoshida. We've been doing it pretty routinely in the home run prop department. I think it's been undervalued in a Baltimore ball uh, ballpark that's still pretty decent for lefty power. So Boston minus one and a half. I'm just going to save ourselves some time. Another clear cut like play on the run line to get our day going. Said you sense a trend. Do you... Sense it. I smell it. It's in the air. We've got Yusai Kikuchi. He's on the mound. But we're going to kind of be utilizing him today. Oh, my God. What is going on? Well, what's going on is they're playing the Chicago White Sox. And this Chicago White Sox team has been just abysmal. I think out of any baseball team so far this season, you could call them the biggest underachievers at 7-16 and 16 in an easy division with a lot of good pieces. Dylan Cease, 
not really anybody else at the moment. Pretty wild, the White Sox, the fall off here. They had all the starting pitching, and now they have one of the starting pitching. Carlos Rodon, a distant memory, multiple years now. San Francisco, New York, we'll be seeing him very, very shortly. That'll be fun to watch. But going up against Michael Kopech, Michael Kopech, it's not been good as a starter. Two years ago when he was coming out of the bullpen, things were nice, things were lovely. This season already, through four starts, a 7 ERA, 6.97 to be exact, 1.74 whip, nothing is going well. Got some strikeouts against Tampa Bay. You're going to still find some strikeouts in that lineup from time to time, but still gave a five earned. Oh, boy. Michael Kopech. I wish he had panned out. Well, actually, I don't. I'm a Minnesota Twins fan, but I kind of like the guy. Just liked his stuff. It's probably going to be a bullpen arm sooner rather than later. But you said Kikuchi. I'm very happy that we have not been targeting him of late. And somebody in premium Discord had brought up, Eric, have you seen Yusai Kikuchi pitch in spring ball? No, because I don't really care. I'm still targeting other guys but i did not target barrios in any meaningful way today and i'm not going to be targeting kikuchi either he's been pretty darn good a 3.80 era isn't anything impressive but a 1.17 whip he's not going to be walking guys and he has what five walks now in four starts you said kikuchi's gonna kill you if you're targeting him here and this white Sox team really brings nothing and i do mean nothing to the table offensively at the moment and it's kind of putting it a little bit lightly. So, yeah, that's three straight minus one and a half run lines. Really what you're trying to do at these plus money type numbers is you're just trying to, sorry, Toronto minus one and a half. We are trying to just hit two of the three in the early window of games. Yes, get our morning started, have two of the three games, get us across the finish line. That's called profit, my friends. Plus 125 projects out nicely for me. Toronto, can't believe it. It's a new age, friends. Welcome to the new age to the new age i'm radioactive Toronto minus one and a half let's slow our roll a little bit however i kind of don't want to another w us back in colorado what a time to be alive but there's no line out here yet i'm thinking about it kind of want to do it it's gonna be tough though we know herman marquez is going to be coming off of the il here he's expected to be starting first time now since the 10th of april it's been he was 15 day il look at that it's math it's april 26th happy birthday to my little brother too while we're at it cleveland we don't know who's going to be starting for them i have zero idea they haven't called anybody up from triple a this could be a bullpen situation i have zero clue normally i have an idea of who's going to be inserted into that starting rotation because twitter will tell me no clue no clue i've looked at DraftKings, FanDuel, at mgm caesars Everywhere, baseball spawn, where it would load, fan graphs, twitter.com, lots of places, no information. So we're going to wait and see. Did you know Cleveland's lineup, though? Just not very good here of late. I hope you did. Against right handed pitching 82 WRC, plus, I'm going to be targeting that here going forward. Against lefties 89 WRC, plus, yeah, congratulations. They're contact hitters. Ball's not doing anything. J Ram, he's still J Ram, but like everybody else in this lineup, just a really tough ask. So even J-Ram, 256, three homers, 16 ribbies. It's nothing special. It's good. Whatever, we should just continue on. Colorado plus one and a half, going to be the lean for a third straight day. But again, I got to see who's going to be pitching for them. And Herman Marquez outside of Coors. Something tells me I want to pull the trigger. But we shall see tomorrow. Hit me up on Twitter, at Eric Lindquist. I'll, I'll let you know if I'm playing it. Another spot that should be pretty quick to cover, the Minnesota Twins. The New York Yankees. Domingo Ramon. I think you know by now, not my favorite. Kenta Maeda. Hope you know that I hope he becomes my favorite here. He had a really great first start going up against Miami. Everything came up roses with nine strikeouts. And that has fallen off a cliff, my friends. Three strikeouts in his last two outings, including zero against Boston. Just two, uh, two innings pitch there, though. A little bit of an issue with an ankle. Turned an ankle. Wasn't great. But either way, he should be good here. A one whip. Going up against the Yankees, I expect strikeouts. I also am pretty freaked out to target the Yankees lineup anytime as a minus 130 favorite. But, I mean, is Dermago Armand good now again? I can't tell. I'm trying to have a tough time deciding. The strikeout stuff has come up at times. Against Cleveland, it wasn't. And again, contact, but the ball didn't do anything. Just one and run in that one. But eight, 11, and six strikeouts in three of his other four outings. Decent stuff. Velocity looks okay. Not really sure if I want to be doing anything in particular with this game. Maybe props. Maybe we go to Joey Gallo. 
in the gallo the gallo minnesota money line that's going to be where we're leaning in this one and we're just going to move ourselves along because this is a freaky game to target total perfect money line perfect whatever god another spot that's just disgusting freddie peralta he should be a massive favorite here in this one and what do you do basil look at it he is going up against the detroit tigers who i think against right-handed pitching are going to have nothing with a 71 wrc plus they do have Kerry carpenter who decided to go yard went yam skis again today Yamskis never called it that, but going up against Michael Lorenzen of the Detroit Tigers, who I wish he was good. He's a nice guy. Met him last year. He was with the Angels. Nice guy. I don't really have anything to say about his arsenal. He's just throwing fastballs. They're not necessarily good. Two starts now so far this season. Six earned runs in that San Francisco game against Baltimore was decent in just 68 pitches, but or sorry, 68. Yeah, 68 pitches. I was correct. My notes are correct. I would not lie to you people. I love you all. But Milwaukee, minus one and a half to back them here. I'm laying minus 105. I think this is a pass. Maybe Kerry Carpenter home runs. Maybe there's some K props. You never really know until they show up. You never really know. Freddie Peralta, I think, should be able to mow down a couple of these Detroit uh, Tigers bats. 25% K rate against right-handed pitching so far this season. 538 plate attempts. It's decent. Whatever. Another spot we should just pass and move along. Huh. We got a lot of this coming up. Buckle in. Kansas City, Arizona, and wouldn't you know it, not another great spot for targeting value. Now, Zach Allen, one of my favorites. He's pitching almost too well so far this season. He's on five starts. One of the only pitchers in baseball with five starts, and he just keeps getting better. I'm very nervous, very nervous that these are the kind of numbers we're going to be staring at with Arizona going forward. Do you remember early in the season, we were getting Arizona minus 140, minus 150, and I said, just keep backing Gallon, keep backing Gallon, even though difficult spots against the Dodgers at times. That one didn't go as well. We actually had the loss in that one, but a lot of other spots that really make sense. But Zach Gallon, 2.59 ERA, 0.80 whip, 11 Ks in two of his last three games. Just disgustingly good stuff that we're looking at with him. So there you go. We just back him. I think that that's what you do when the numbers aren't this inappropriate. Minus 210, minus 120. I gotta lean the money line on that side, especially because Kansas City on the other side of this one. Ryan Yarborough now going to be starting once upon a time, a spot like a long reliever there for Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay parted ways with him. That's all you need to know. So far this season, really, really bad stuff. 7.62 ERA, 1.39 whip. Nothing is good. Everything's not awesome. Everything's not cool when you're not part of this team. So Arizona money line, a lean. Wish we were getting better numbers across the board. To Pittsburgh, we go for another round of uh, Dodger baseball, and they ran into a buzzsaw here today. The game is just shooting out in a ridiculous way here at the moment. 5-7, uh, going into the top of the eighth. They are trailing. We'll see how that one ends up finishing out. I just want a James Outman home run, just for the people, so we can keep this crazy home run binge going. Again, if you can hit one every other day, you are massively up. They're going to cut you off real quick. Oh, yeah. You're not going to be able to do that as much anymore. It'd be a good problem to have to a certain extent. Well, actually, it'd be a very bad problem to have for people who do this for a living, like me. So there's that. Anyway, let's talk the Pittsburgh Pirates going up against the Dodgers in this one. And uh, interesting pitching situation because you've got Tony Gunsland back on the mound. But I can't imagine he's going to be long for this game for Dave Roberts and company here from the Dodgers side. Looks like he's pretty darn good. He's always pretty darn good. Last year, 2.14 ERA, 0.88 whip. Strikeout stuff went up. He was one of the guys who could have just ran away with an NL Cy Young. And then Alcantara happened. Sandy Alcantara just ran away with it at the very end. And Tony Gonsolin got hurt. So that sucks. Anyway, don't think he's going to be pitching along for this one, but a bullpen situation, not great to really be out of my way targeting there. Looks like Andre Jackson could be one of the longer relievers in that one. He got up to 63 pitches on the 21st. Just looking at the rest day, I think as a righty, he could come in. Him and Gonsolin, both righties here. So maybe there's a number to be found for like a Jack Sawinski, some of those guys, some of the lefties that have just been outperforming. McCutcheon going yard today, what is going on? But Ronzi Contreras on the mound here for Pittsburgh. Had some really good stuff. I've been saying this forever. I like his strikeout stuff. 
but the walks have still got me a little bit nervous. A 1.52 whip. He's had at least two walks and three straight. Difficult spot here. Can he keep it going? I don't know. Houston gave up seven earned, but otherwise St. Louis, two earned. Cincy against righties, they're terrible. We've talked about that multiple times. Pretty much just that Houston outing that's been a little bit of a, a pressure point to that ERA, why it's sitting at 4.57. Expected ERA down there. But I have to think if we're going to be leaning anywhere. Pittsburgh, again, plus 105. I can't believe that that would be my lean here again, but it just is. I think this is a pretty efficient game, though, here. It might be a prop situation. That's where the premium Discord comes in handy. That's where Odd Shopper comes in handy. That's where hitting me up on Twitter comes in handy. So do all of those things at Eric Lindquist. Just my name. Don't wear it out. Wear this promotion out, though, friends. Bet $5. Get 150 in bonus bets at FanDuel Sportsbook. It's only for 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. But, friends, you go to the link below. If you don't have FanDuel Sportsbook, this is $150 in bonus bets that are guaranteed to go into your account as soon as as you bet $5 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So I really don't have a whole lot else to add. Just do that. Okay. I'm Ron Burgundy. That's really it. Bet $5. Get 150 in bonus bets. Simple as that. Again, 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call one in our gambler. Lots of other great offers going in the video description box below. So find something for you in your area. Great stuff here at Odd Shopper. And we continue on our merry way. Another spot that's just really hard to pin down. And obviously, there's no line out here yet because, oh, and Chris Taylor just three run homer. Now, eight, seven Dodgers. That game is just out of control. Uh, we have the Houston Astros going up against the Tampa Bay Rays. We know Hunter Brown going to be down to pitch, not like a clown without a frown. Yeah, we want him to be happy. Hunter Brown going up against Tampa Bay here. He's been a stud so far this season. And across the board, great numbers, as you would expect for a prospect as highly touted as him. 328 expected slugging, 24.7% K rate. Everything looks nice across the board. And on the Tampa Bay side, no idea what we're going to be running into. I think, if I had to guess, you're going to get Josh Fleming being a long reliever in this situation. His last appearance came on the 19th. It's a long time to go without work. And he's somebody who generally pitches on the back half of the bullpens, or sorry, back half of the rotations where he's going to be a longer reliever type. I expect Calvin Foucher or somebody of that nature to be your starting pitcher here just for an inning or two, and then they'll switch the handednesses of it. You know, that's generally what Tampa Bay does, even though they've had some lefty-lefty stuff uh, from time to time here lately. It's been a little bit strange. But Houston, they won't be flipping their lineup around like other teams might uh, to account for the platoon. So I don't think it matters as much when projecting out their numbers. Houston money line, though, going to be a lean for me with Hunter Brown. I got to imagine they're going to be favored in this one, though. Uh, pretty I'm hoping it's not above minus 135. So if it's above it, we pass and we move on with our lives. But... This play needs to be on your radar for tomorrow. We go to flip, 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 Philadelphia. Seattle Mariners visiting. Logan Gilbert had his start pushed back a day, and it might get pushed again because there is some weather hanging out over Cleveland, it looks like, for tomorrow. Be on the lookout there. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I like baseball. And I like games that I could actually bet and actually find some some things for and i have one for you here so there you go taiwan walker gonna be on the mound here going for philadelphia so far this season been pretty good i'd say above average in a lot of regards for what i would expect for taiwan walker 3.8 era across the board looks better than he has in years past not quite his arizona self uh here as of yet but uh i think that this is just like your best version you've had in a long time of taiwan walker but I don't really care when it comes to Jared Klenick because I have to give this guy a shout out. There's a great article on Baseball Savant. You should go read it. Talking about his change in approach and batting stance and everything else. And that's not the reason that I want to you know, bet him. I want to bet him because he has a 58% hard hit percentage, a 688 expected slugging. And he is starting to live up to that billing of being one of the top prospects in baseball. We started to see it at the tail end of last year during the playoffs. They needed him for that run, you know. Rodriguez, I mean, you can only do so much for that team. Carried them a long ways. Ty France uh, as well. Jared Klenick, though, 319, six homers, and facing a righty with over a one OPS. I mean, come on. This is just screaming bet. Screaming bet. A lot of lefties with power there. Kyle Schwarber, Bryce Harper on the Philadelphia side for the last couple of years. Have a pretty good idea of how this ballpark plays for lefty power as a result. So there you go. Are we going to see him soon? 
I want to see Bryce Harper pretty soon here. Whatever. Jared Kalenic, to go yard. My favorite home run play of the day tomorrow. Give me something north of plus 250, please. We should definitely be getting something north of plus 250, please. That's it. That's the barometer. I have him going yard. And hey, said the plays would ramp up later. Here they are. They've arrived. Washington. We got Mackenzie Gore. The heralded Mackenzie Gore, uh, one of the prime pieces, the only piece that's really working out here so far from that Juan Soto Swaparuski. Uh, going up against Ghost Fork himself, Kadai Senga, who's just uh, Senga Genesis is just an awesome, awesome pitcher. And it has not been pretty the last two. And part of that, just the walks. Again, he's walked at least three straight and four outings. I mean, this is ridiculous. But now he gets a Washington lineup. So against righties, they are just inept. 80, uh, 67 WRC plus, a .092 ISO, the lowest mark in baseball. So even if he walks, guys, it's not he's going to get overly punished unless Babbitt just kills him. I think he mows down Washington. But I also think Mackenzie Gore is going to find some success against this Mets team. Lefties for the season against the Mets. You got to get by Pete Alonso. 107 WRC plus, 165 ISO. But overall, 264 Babbitt, that probably is due for a little bit of regression. Not going to be striking out as many guys, but I really like what we're seeing in terms of a pitch mix from Mackenzie Gore. Seems like huh, Washington, they've developed, started pitching once upon a time here. And a 328 expected slugging with a 29% K rate is nothing to bat at. Now, do not walk, guys, specifically Starling Marte. They will run all over you. But a lefty is a good thing to be, I think, as opposed to... Well, just get by Pete a lot, so that's that's the key to your day. I think the under is a slam dunk, though, as it stands right now. Eight and a half being a lock. Yes, weather getting a little bit cooler up there in the old northeast. We're seeing them play uh, playing the Mets pretty tough here right now, up 4 nothing, top of the sixth. Just a little scoreboard watching for you. But under eight and a half, one of my two locks that I have on the board for Wednesday. This is not the other lock. We have the Miami Marlins taking on the Atlanta Braves and pretty scary stuff that we're seeing from Sandy Alcantara, who's just been struggling. And it's scary in a bad way. Four starts so far this season. A 5.47 ERA for the reigning champ, for the reigning Cy Young Award winner. I know he's primarily a fastball guy who doesn't really miss bats, and that's a tough thing to be. If you're going to be having issues with location, if you're going to be leaving things over the plate, if you have a 280 expected batting average going against you. Now, do I want to freak out too much? He has bicep tendonitis. I mean, that was why he got scratched from his last start. Hasn't pitched now since the 16th, but 10 days of rest does a body good. I think I'm going to probably just gear away from this one, considering Atlanta's a minus 150 favorite against the reigning NL Cy Young Award winner. It really gets us, it's really as simple as that. And I get it, Bryce Elder, he's had the Elder Wand, like he's been in Harry Potter this season, a 378 expected slugging, still a 53.1% hard hit, does show that he's going to get tapped up here a little bit from time to time still, and a righty against Miami is still a good thing to be, but I just don't really like this game at this price. I think it's a pass all the way around. Maybe some home run props that jump up to me tomorrow, maybe some total bases, maybe some other goodies, but... They're not my goodies right here. So we're going to be passing on the game entirely. If I had to, though, under eight and a half would be my lean here. Ten days of rest for Alcantara. You get a pretty good pitcher up there against a pretty bad offense in Miami. I think that would be the lean. Look at these Cubbies go. I tell you what, up 2 nothing on Blake Snell right now. Bottom of the fourth. One on third. We'll see if he comes around here. Oh, two outs already there in that one. That ended up being on the card. The Cubs have just been on the card a lot of late, and they have not been disappointing. And now they get to face Michael Waka Waka from San Diego with Drew Smiley on the mound, who's been fabulous this season. A 23.3% hard hit percentage, 167 expected batting average, 246 expected slugging. I do not expect these numbers to continue for one Drew Smiley. I mean, this would really, truly... Be from the clouds, from the absolute middle of nowhere. Last season, a 4.17 expected ERA. This season, a 1.95 expected ERA. He's a sinker curveball cutter guy. Really no velocity. No bells and whistles. And he is just doing amazing things. He's never going to be a strikeout artist. This 25.6% thing is going to come way down. And I know he had one season with very limited sample where he came up with Ben 37.8% K rate. Disregard that in 2020. Doesn't even count towards the sample. When he's been a starter, been right around a 22% K rate, 21% K rate. 
throughout his career. I do not expect this to continue, but hey, hope it continues for a day because against Michael Walker, I have a lot more questions about him. Now, the inconsistency has always been there for Michael Walker. It's always been a part of what you have to deal with, the range of outcomes of certain pitchers. But this guy has had unbelievable outings, like against Atlanta, 10 strikeouts, just two hits given up. And then against Milwaukee and Arizona, 11 and 10 hits given up in each of those outings and just three strikeouts in each. 7.08 ERA has, has been the ballooned number. I don't know what to tell you. All I know is that this Cubs lineup is no joke. And if you have your stuff off, just even a little bit, I can't imagine how San Diego is favored here. And this almost became a third lock. It almost became it. But the Cubs money line, pretty straightforward play for me. Now, Cody Bellinger, you will not be suiting up here for this one. He's gone. He's on the paternity. So goodbye. Enjoy that. But I'm feeling pretty good about the Chicago money line. Enjoying that. Damn near lock. Fire it up for tomorrow, but lock coming up next. Yes, my friends. Oh, what would a day be without locking the Angels, right? Well, we're not going to be. Thank God. Thank God. It's the Oakland A's, the Los Angeles Angels, and it's Patrick Sandoval on the on the mound here for the Angels. A southpaw, and we'll go over those number again. And then it's funky Luis Medina. Looking forward to watching him pitch a little baseball. 3.86 ERA so far in Las Vegas. Don't forget the PCL. Not the best of leagues to be pitching in, that's for sure. Decent stuff, nothing crazy, nothing that jumps out to me, but first start against the Angels. I mean, there's a reason they're minus 245 here. because That's not where you want to be starting, but I have hope Oakland can add some runs to the fray too. Gone through this before, but it was not just Jesus Aguilar, Brent Rooker going double dong the other night that got them there, but this Oakland team has a 125 WRC plus against left-handed pitching. That's fifth best in baseball so far. It's a very limited sample. We're early in the year, and I expect that to regress, but I digress. Oakland can hit lefties, apparently, so far, and they are in a great ballpark for home runs. That would be Anaheim here. Getting out of Oakland. Lock over nine. This is way too low. It's minus 115. Tiny bit of above juice, but I don't care. It's everywhere, baby. Let's go. You're everywhere to me. And when I touch your hand, it's you, I see. Something like that. Over nine runs. Take it to the moon. My favorite, favorite over-under of the entire day, even including that Washington-New York Mets game. And we'll go out with a little bit of a bang here. We're heading to a great pitcher's ballpark here in San Francisco, even though eight and a half total. A little bit bigger number than you might be expecting. A lot of big totals that we've had there of late. And Steven Matz on the mound, lefty, going up against the San Francisco Giants. J.D. Davis, hey, if you're going to go yard, maybe they can be good. But Anthony Desclafani, there might be a little bit of a discount getting some lefty power going up against him. He's been good so far this season. 2.63 ERA, 0.88 whip. But this is still just a pitcher that I'm not sure you're going to see this exact same kind of profile by the end of the year, considering he has a 50.7% hard hit percentage. Now, some of that has been on the ground, but there's one hitter in particular I want to highlight and star, and I have been for a year plus with this guy. His name's Nolan Gorman, 621 expected slugging, 54.9% hard hit percentage. Everything is coming up roses with him so far this season, and I think you get the ballpark discount. I think you get the decent starting pitcher discount. Nolan Gorman. I think he's my other home run play. Yes, ironically enough, another lefty that I'm just throwing on the board. I'm, I'm just going to throw Austin Riley in for the hell of it today, just so I get a righty on the board in the home run department. But Nolan Garman is making the card for sure, as long as this number is not ridiculous. And I expect to get some nice plus 400 or better uh, going up against a righty here, and Nolan Gorman just murders them. So there you go. Going out with a bang. It's a lean because I need to see the numbers. Them's the rules. Pretty sure it's going to be on the card. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks in the MLB. Head to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays on the board for Wednesday. Let me know how Tuesday went for you, too. Always nice to recap. Always nice to, to lament or to glorify or to be happy. Well, I'm here to be happy. That's good stuff. And FanDuel Sportsbook could make you happy if you haven't signed up there yet. Bet $5. Get 150 in bonus bets only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, y'all, I'll be back on Thursday with a, a smaller slate than normal uh, for once uh, in the MLB streets. That's good stuff. Until then, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Wednesday.